Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, I will go ahead and welcome everyone, whether you are watching this with us now live. And I do see some new um, names, not faces, but um, that's very exciting. I'm so thrilled you guys are all here to learn about clubs from our very own clubs expert, Laura. Um, you actually get double the Laura uh, for webinars with this week on Emerge Clubs and next week on our reading uh, therapy services. So we have that to look forward to as well. Um, but if people do start to trickle in, uh, you will like that you'll just miss my part. So you can always go back and watch it. Um, so whether you're watching live, thank you for being here or whether you're watching a replay of this. Thank you for taking the time to learn about Emerge Clubs. Um, if you've been to one of these webinars before, you know that we have partnered with this excellent group of community partners that has been a great support system for us um, and have made these possible, have made them free. And if you're attending this club, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, this webinar, and you do sign up for a club, these sponsors are the reason that you'll save some money. Um, so first up, we have Goldfish Swim School. Um, they are right up the road. Uh, I'm in Carbro. They're right up the road from us um, in Rams Plaza. They are an indoor swim lesson facility that is open all year. Um, they keep their uh, their like waiting area heated. Um, it feels very tropical. It's great for kids. Bright colors. Uh, achievable goals. They build a lot of confidence for kids, just like we do at Emerge. And um, yeah, they're a great community resource and um, they're keeping kids safe in the pool and confident uh, out of the pool. So great community partner, happy to have linked up with them for this. Um, Holman Family Dental Care, Shana Holman is the owner as well as uh, one of the practicing dentists there. Um, Shana uh, is from the area and is very familiar with the area and is very supportive of local businesses like ours, uh, fellow woman owned business. So we're happy to link up there. And uh, we uh, share a lot of resources with one another from um, you know, tongue ties and torticollis, um, things that speech therapy can support as well as um, dental intervention. So we're lucky to work with them on a fairly regular basis and um, send folks back and forth for support. Uh, Robbie Norris Farm Bureau. Robbie has been in the uh, in this area for almost two decades, I think, as a Farm Bureau agent. Um, he just keeps winning award after award. My personal insurance is with him. Um, he is just a, a great guy and always looking for opportunities to support the community, things like this. So as soon as I told him we want to help parents get more information, he was like, I'm in, tell me what you need. So um, if you have the opportunity and you find yourself in need of insurance services, Robbie is where I would send you. And then Chapel Hill Media Group, um, they are 97.9 The Hill on um, FM radio, if you're here local, and um, they are chapelboro.com online. Chapelboro.com is this area's only source for daily local news. Um, so it's a great service to the community, keeping people informed, uh, reporting on what's going on here. There's so much going on in this area that it's great to have um, this like hyper local focus on news and information. Um, so grateful for them for literally jumping on to sponsor and helping us broadcast this out to the community so that we could support more friends and families. So Laura, that is my spiel. I will let you take it away. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And thank you, Laura, in advance for the time. Awesome. Thanks, Sally. Um, so my name is Laura Strank, and I am a speech therapist here at Emerge Pediatric Therapy. Um, I joined Emerge in 2018 after I fell in love um, with the clinic um, as a student here. Um, and I have been serving children ever since then. Um, and in addition to working as a speech therapist, I've taken on lots of other roles in the clinic um, that have really supported some of my passions, um, including program development. Um, I love helping to figure out what the needs are in the community and then find ways to create opportunities um, based on those needs. And then I also love working with my coworkers and figuring out what they're passionate about and finding ways to turn those passions into supports for the families that we serve. Um, and so I really loved doing that. Um, it really helps give me that 
ability to educate and support the team and make sure that we're providing the most evidence-based um, care to the children that we serve. Um, in terms of my specific clinical interests, um, I love providing services and specialize in literacy, which you'll hear more about next week, um, as well as a proxy of speech and autism. Um, in my free time, I'm a bit of a homebody. I love eating good food, snuggling with my cats, reading a book, um, but I also love going out and traveling. Um, so that's a little bit about me, and now we'll get a little more into um, the, our Emerge Club offerings. Um, so at Emerge, we're a clinic that's been around for over 20 years, and um, one of the things that really put us on the map were our version of Emerge Clubs at those at the at that time. Um, and so we've always been known as a place that parents could bring their children to work on regulation, sensory skills, communication, um, both an individual and in a group setting. And it's been really fun to watch how Emerge Clubs have changed over the years as we have tried to keep up with the latest evidence basis. Um, evidence base um, and to make sure that we're supporting kids in the best ways possible. So today in this presentation, we're going to go over four main things. First, we're going to have a general overview of what Emerge Clubs are and some of the guiding principles that we use um, within this program. We're also going to talk about who Emerge Clubs are designed for and then the types of clubs that we offer. And then we'll have information on how to sign up at the end. So first, what are Emerge Clubs? So at Emerge, our mission, especially when it comes to our clubs, are to create a space that is inclusive of all neurotypes. Um, we work really hard to follow the latest research and to plan each club session based on the individual needs of each child within the larger group dynamic. Um, so while we may offer the same clubs um, semester after semester, those clubs may look really different depending on the children in the club um, because we want to make sure that it fits their needs and what they are working on, and also what they're really passionate about and what their interests are. Um, our big guiding principle is we want to make sure that clubs are a place or something that kids want to do. It's not seen as work, but seen as fun, because we believe that positive peer interaction is a lot more meaningful and motivating um, when you include children with varied neurotypes, which we'll talk more about, when you include activities that all of the kids are excited about, and when there are adults there to kind of help guide but not take over those activities. So I've talked a lot about um, accepting children with a diverse different neurotypes into our clubs. And so it's really important to kind of go back and think about neurodiversity affirming care and explain what that is, because that is the number one thing that we strive to achieve in our Emerge clubs. So the big question is, what is neurodiversity? Um, and neurodiversity is just the recognition that there are variations in how our brain processes information. And, um, you know, there's no, no such thing as wrong or an incorrect way to process information. The same way that we value biodiversity in the environment, we should be valuing neurodiversity in the human experience. And so if you look over here, you can see our neurodivergent umbrella. And this includes some of the diagnoses that fall under that umbrella of being different from neurotypical or neurodivergent. And so um, when we're thinking about being neurodiversity affirming, that means we are supporting children just regardless of their neurotype. Um, and neurodiversity includes not just one person, but a group of people. And it helps, um, and it really is about making sure that we're supporting both neurotypical and neurodivergent people all within that umbrella. Um, so neurodiversity affirming care is the belief that Everyone has differences in their abilities and how they interact with the world around them. And just because something is different does not mean that it is disordered. Um, and so the goal of therapy, and especially our Emerge Clubs, should not be to make a child look or act more, neuro more neurotypical, but instead recognize and celebrate their differences and really empower them to um, advocate for themselves and to be around others who may look at the world and experience the world differently from them. 
So how does this guiding principle impact our clubs? Um, so it's really, I'm going to go through our list first of what we do not teach. Um, sometimes when people are thinking about groups and working on um, social interactions, they're thinking about very um, neurotypical social skills. And that's not something that we work on. We want to work on empowering, not um, teaching someone that their way of interacting with the world is wrong. Um, so we do not teach eye contact. We do not teach whole body listening. Um, you know, eye contact can be really painful and uncomfortable for a lot of neurodivergent people. Um, and whole body listening, a lot of people maybe need to move, need to fidget in order to engage and listen and interact with other people. So we're not going to teach that. Um, we don't teach and compliance and we don't teach masking. So masking is, you know, covering up some of those um, like initial uh interactions with the world and trying to make them look more more neurotypical and all of the research shows that that could have long-term you know poor psychological impacts um for these kids it's not good for your mental health to constantly have to cover up who you truly are so we don't want to teach that to our kids um when they're in a group setting so what we do teach is we teach the children in our clubs how to recognize their needs um request those needs and use different types of sensory tools to support their participation and so that's the really cool thing about being in a club at emerge kids are able to you know connect with others, build friendships, be in a group environment, but they have access to usually an occupational and speech therapist in a clinic where we have so many sensory tools available to us, um, whether that be alternative seating like hoppity balls or wiggle cushions or, you know, hand fidgets. We have all of the tools that a child may need to explore and figure out what works best for them. And then they can take that knowledge into other settings. Um, so in addition to teaching these children how to recognize and advocate for those needs, we're teaching them about feedback and about self-advocacy. Um, so we're te teaching them not how to sit still, keep your hands on your lap and listen to someone, but we're teaching them that if their body needs a little movement to listen, how to advocate for that, how to tell people like, hey, I learn better when my body is moving and how to convey those needs to others. And we're teaching them about feedback, not only accepting feedback from others, but also giving feedback to others. So if another child is being too loud and it's really bothering them, what is an affirming way that we can provide that feedback while also being accepting of their differences? And then inherently, when we're talking about self-advocacy and feedback, we're also teaching a lot about perspective taking. So learning about how to recognize our needs and ourselves, but also how to recognize what others might be thinking and feeling and how to use that information to guide our interactions. And then, of course, we're all about acceptance. So learning about how to accept differences in ourselves and differences in others. So again, our goal for Emerge Clubs is not to teach your child typical social skills, but instead teach them how to recognize and celebrate differences, advocate for their needs, and form friendships. Because when we are our most authentic selves, that enables us to form the most authentic friendships and relationships possible. Um, so that's kind of our overarching goal. Um, but specific goals are really going to differ based on the individual club and age range that your child is is participating in. Um, and so our consistent goals include, you know, supporting regulation, supporting self-advocacy, and supporting compromise and teamwork. But how that looks may be a little different depending on the club your child is in or their age. So families bring their children here to Emerge in order to provide them with individualized, supportive, hands-on interactions with peers. And all of our sessions will focus on providing those just right challenges for each client in a peer setting, because when you have that just right challenge, that is what gives you the ability to grow. Um, and all of our clubs are co-led by an OT and speech therapist um, and have a pretty low ratio of adults to children. So up to four children, um, four adults and seven children. And by having this, kids are able to be in a peer setting, but still get a little bit more direct support by having that lower ratio than you might see in a classroom or other um, external activities. 
So now we're going to talk a little bit more about who Emerge Clubs are designed for now that you all understand what our overarching goals are um, that we're working on in the Emerge Clubs. And the answer is Emerge Clubs are for everyone. Um, so all of the children in our clubs um, have mixed neurotypes. Um, sometimes people will call and say, hey, this club looks really interesting, but my child's not autistic. Like, would they still be a good fit for the club? And the answer is yes. We have children in our clubs that may have diagnoses of autism or ADHD or maybe no diagnosis at all. Um, we don't really, um, you don't have to have a certain diagnosis to benefit from a club. Um, and so we are welcome to everyone. Um, and typically we're trying to match children with similar goals and ages in the same club. And those recommendations for club participation are made based on your child's age and their individual goals. Um, and so since our goal is to make sure Emerge Clubs are as meaningful and, and impactful for each child as possible, um, we typically will offer some sort of screening if you are a new client so that we're able to meet your child, get to know you, get to know your goals um, before you officially commit to the club. And then we have our first week of our club, our first four weeks of the clubs, um, excuse me, be open enrollment. So that way you're able to try it out, see if it's a good fit for your child, communicate with the therapist therapist leading the club and make sure that everyone is on the same page. So if your child's not quite ready for a group's goals and maybe they require a little more one-on-one -on -one support or maybe they're demonstrating some challenges with regards to safety, um, clubs might not be the be best fit at that time, but then we can always help guide you um, through individual services with an ultimate long-term goal of being ready for an eMERGE club. So we offer a couple different types of Emerge Clubs that I'm going to talk about next. Um, so we offer several different types of preschool-aged clubs. Um, so you can see the most common preschool-aged clubs we offer are Preschool Power and Social Butterflies. And they both have a, they, each of these are made for children in that preschool age range, but might look a little bit different. So Preschool Power mimics more of a structured preschool environment, while Social Butterflies explores more themes surrounding different pretend play topics. Um, so the children who would be appropriate for these clubs um, might have some regulation needs that can be met by modifying the environment some to support the client. And their overarching goals are surrounding being around peers, whether that's participating in group activities like obstacle courses, story time, crafts, or moving from parallel play to more reciprocal play. So instead of just, you know, play, doing your own thing beside another child, being able to engage and have those back and forths within a play schema. Um, our preschool aged clubs will often work on turn taking games um, with really simple games like pop up pirate or zingo and work on initiating interactions with others. We also have a selection of clubs for um, early elementary school. Our most common and popular club is Social Scouts. And for Social Scouts and those clubs in that age range, um, the focus is really on learning about therapeutic concepts within structured activities and applying these concepts within simple collaborative games. Um, so we would expect that children who participate in the, this type of club be able to start to recognize their needs and start to request different tools and only need slight modifications to the environment to participate. And then the overarching goals of this club are to work on just exploring and using different types of regulation tools work on learning compromise and how to um, work through and problem solve different solutions with others. Um, these clubs work on providing feedback and self-advocacy skills. So they might get explicit instruction on what is feedback. Feedback is something that is kind, clear, and helpful. Or they might work on using I statements to advocate for themselves. So I feel blank when blank happens, I need this. And then also there is more of an emphasis on collaborative play in these clubs. So working on collaborative board games like Race to the Treasure or Outboxed and more movement-based games like you would see in first grade, kindergarten, second grade, like Simon Says, Red Light, Green Light, Statues. Um, and so that's what those clubs look like. Our next set of clubs are some late elementary school um, aged clubs. So some of the common ones that we offer are Adventure Squad, Social Sleuths, Gaming Guild, and Minecraft Masters. 
So um, typically, we're, we are hoping that we don't need to modify the environment too much to support participation for our children in these clubs, but we are going to have tools available, and they might require some support to use these tools. Um, children here are going to learn about therapeutic concepts during structured activities and then apply these concepts during more complex collaborative games and projects. So these children are also going to work on compromise and solutions, but they may also work on how do we enact more complex compromising um, ideas, like combining two different sets of ideas into one. Um, they're also going to work on feedback and self-advocacy. And then the collaborative games that they use might be a little more challenging. So things like stacking cups with a rubber band, trying to flip a sheet over without stepping off, doing a boss and builder style activity where communication um, is really important and really a little more challenging to give them that just right challenge. Um, and they'll also spend time linking what they do in clubs to real life examples. So they might talk about hypotheticals, they might act out different scenarios and work through them as a larger group. And then we also have several different specialty clubs that we offer. Um, so Setting the Stage is an acting club that we offer for children 11 and older. And so it gives them a chance to work on, you know, nonverbal communication, perspective taking in an acting type setting. Um, we offer feeding clubs where children are able to learn about the science behind food and learn about how to explore different foods in order to work on picky eating. And then over the summer, we offer Reading and Succeeding, which is a reading and writing club for children who are about the kindergarten to third grade level, depending on need. Um, and so in general, these clubs require that children are a little more independently regulated because, the con because of the concepts being targeted and also because these clubs tend to just have one leader. Um, and so it's it's a little more important that regulation not be as big of a goal. So that is everything you would need to know about Emerge Club. So now I want to tell you a little bit more about how you get started. So we have three rounds of Emerge Clubs that we offer, um, one during the spring, which runs from about February to May, one over the summer, which runs from about June to August, and one round over the fall, which runs from September to December. Um, the Emerge Club slate is drafted by some of our therapy leads in order to match the needs of our community and clinic. Therefore, they may be different each semester because we're really trying to listen to you all and then figure out what the biggest need is when we are designing those clubs. Um, and so you can see a link here to our registration page for our Emerge Clubs. If registration for a round of clubs is open, you can sign up. If registration is closed, then you can always add um, your name to our interest list. And so when you're on this list, you are informed via email when registration for clubs opens. And then also it's really helpful when you're on this list because this is the type of feedback that we use to help inform our club slate. So if we say see a lot of names on the interest list for social scouts, you might say, okay, there's a big need for social scouts in our community right now. So we're going to try to make sure we have that club available in the upcoming semester. Um, and Allie has created this beautiful QR that you all can use to um, go to our club's information page now. Um, our next round of clubs is actually opening for registration on Monday for our current clients and on Wednesday for all new clients. Um, so you can check out the club information on our website to read a little bit more about our current club offerings and then um, look forward to registering um, early next week. And then I'll probably pass this off to Allie there, but that's all the information I wanted to share with you all. So thanks for attending this webinar, and I hope it was really helpful um, with helping you learn about what Emerge Clubs are and whether or not they could be beneficial for your child. Um, I will see everyone back here when I talk about reading therapy, therapy a little bit next week. Yeah. Um, if you'll just jump back to the schedule real quick, Laura, because we are um, closer to the end of our webinars um, than we are the beginning, but I did want to make sure to share because I do see so many new names in here that all of these webinars are available, even if they've already happened, they're available to view. So we've been doing these every Thursday since uh, almost the beginning of October. Um, and back then when we said these are going to run through Thanksgiving, that felt like a really long time. And now it's almost here. Um, so yeah, any of these that you want to go back and view, um, you can. 
and uh, that QR code is where you would do it. And if you want to register for next week, um, that is the same QR code and you can get registered for reading therapy. Um, we do have the ability to take questions. Um, if anybody did want to, I believe you just use the like raise hand feature and I can allow you to ask your question or you could even send it in the chat and we can ask it to Laura. But if you go to the next slide, Laura's contact information is right there and she's great about email. Um, so if you just want to shoot her a question before, especially before registration on Monday, um, that is going to open up at 8 a.m. If you are a current Emerge client, be sure to ask for the password because it is going to be on a password protected page. Um, and then on Wednesday at 8 a.m., uh, I think that's the 20th next week that'll that password will go away and it'll open up to all um, but Laura's contact information is here um, Brittany our um, executive director and practice owner her contact info is also here um, we do give away a free lunch at each one of these so Kelly um, please be on the lookout for your Jersey Mike's gift card that should come via email um, I don't see any questions popping up but we'll wait just a another minute or so. Laura, thank you for all the great information. I keep saying week after week, I think I learn just as much as everybody else. There's so, so many great programs that we offer at Emerge and there's so many, so much thought and consideration that goes into each one. And it's been really cool to be able to kind of have a front row seat to the, the, the creators behind all of these things and see the how and the why and what makes them passionate. And so I just really appreciate your time and um, knowledge for sharing it with all of us. Of course, I'm glad I got to share it with everyone. Um, this is something I'm definitely really passionate about um, and that, you know, Emerge Clubs have undergone a lot of change in the last mm -hmm. few years with the neurodiversity movement. And so that's just made, you know, what we offer even more evidence-based and even more, um, you know, we've done, we've put a lot of thought and consideration into each of these clubs. So it's exciting to be able to share them with everyone else. And it definitely shows. Um, and I think, that that phrase of like meeting people where they are, meeting children where they are gets like thrown around a lot. But I, you really think about it in terms of clubs when you describe like, it's not just trying to help people act less one way, but more embrace the way they act and feel and exist. Um, and that's truly meeting someone where they are is meeting them there and then not asking them to change. So I love that that is just like at the core work of clubs. And I think it makes it really special. So um, I'm going to let everybody go and enjoy their lunch on this kind of dreary Thursday. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, excited to see new names. Thank you to the previous names that I've seen before that have been joining us week after week. Um, and thank you to Laura for your time and expertise. And uh, hopefully we'll all meet right back here next week for reading therapy. I'll see everyone then. Thanks, Sally. Thanks.